Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the CCO Follow podcast. Today, Travis and I have a mother and son, Anson and Laura Chase, here with us. And as you know, we're going through Advent this month, and this is week number three, which for us is peace. We're going to be covering peace. Um, and so just before we kind of begin and talk about peace and, and Advent, I'm curious just for you guys, what has Advent meant to you in, in your lives? So growing up, we haven't, well, at least, I don't know about my older siblings, but we haven't really done any traditional Advent traditions, mm-hmm. um, but we did have some fun Christmas traditions. Um, like we had Mary and Joseph traveling around the whole downstairs of the house that belonged to the certain oh, wow. um, nativity scene. And um, my mom collects nativity scenes. And so we've got a bunch of those, but oh, like, nice. a, but like a certain um, this Mary and Joseph. This particular one was for you yeah, to do that. Yeah. yeah. A certain uh, Mary and Joseph set and every day they would be like every morning we'd come downstairs and they'd be somewhere else. And so they're like traveling and but then consecutive in order. Yeah. Like they weren't like doing this. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 You know, they're going in a, in a logical, in a logical right. way. So it was like um, the OG elf on the shelf. Yeah. 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 Nice. Yes. Um, but yeah. spiritual. Did you think creative? Well, spiritual. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> um, yeah. And then it was, yeah, it was always fun because Christmas then, morning we knew exactly where they would be. They'd be at the manger and, and on, um, well actually they would came on Christmas Eve. Oh, right. On Christmas Day, was That's Jesus fair. arrived. And beforehand, the manger would be set up at just the animals. I was going to say, where did the you animals hi- would be there. Where did you hide Jesus? In the closet. <laughs> <gasps> you just left him so, in the box? In the, in the nativity <laughs> box. Yeah. yeah. That's great. Um, I, that's definitely a first. I haven't heard that one yeah. yet this, this month. So that's fun. Um, so let's, let's kind of talk about peace a little more. Anson, you, you have um, kind of a. Uh, more in depth of where peace fits into Advent and why. Yeah, so it comes um, in Luke chapter 2 when the um, angels are appearing to the shepherds and um, basically this message that they're bringing to the shepherds is, hey, there's a Savior that's been born and he's bringing peace on earth. And with the whole prophecy of the Messiah, Mm -hmm. um, that is one of the names of the Messiah is the Prince, mm-hmm. of Peace. Prince of Peace. And so this message that they're bringing to the shepherds is that he is going to bring peace on the earth. Yeah. Yeah. I think, um, I don't know how you guys feel about holidays and Christmas, but... I love them. I sometimes don't feel very peaceful. I don't feel at peace. I think the holidays for many of us are kind of chaotic. We talked mm-hmm. about that a little bit in mm-hmm. our last episode, but yeah. um, where, you know... To think that in in the midst of this crazy, busy, wild season, there's peace to be had, and the peace yeah. is Jesus. And so, I'm curious for you guys, what has um, you know your previous Christmases been like? How have you experienced peace, and maybe how have you not experienced peace that you look back on and say, "Wow, I I could have had peace in that area." I can speak to that. Yeah. So when our kids were little. Uh, I grew up in a really formal church, and we mm-hmm. did do Advent, but I didn't know what that meant, mm-hmm. and I didn't know what the purple and the pink candles meant. It was just something we did every year. It was usually reading a um, scripted thing out of a book mm-hmm. for that that was printed for that year, yeah. and I, I didn't. That church was so it, it went so off base afterwards, mm-hmm. and so I wanted nothing to do with any of those yeah. traditions. <laughs> mm-hmm. But I did want the tradition of keeping my kids out of the frenzy of Christmas yeah, and and out of Santa Claus particularly. And I know I'm probably stepping on toes when I say that. And there's other people rooting. I mean, it's very divided. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Sorry to spoil this for anybody who's listening, but Santa is not real. (laughs) 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 We respect other people's beliefs. Okay. Anyway. (laughs) Raise you that way. (laughs) Um, But one of the things we did, there's a book called Santa, Are You For Real? And we Mm. read that every year to our kids. And from the time they were really little Mm -hmm. and, um, and we talked about the real St. Nicholas and how the tradition yeah. of Santa happened. Yeah. And we used to celebrate um, St. Nicholas Day, and that is uh, December 6th. And we would have uh, two other families over, and they'd say, well, can we bring anything? And we wouldn't tell them what we were going to do. And they'd, I'd just say, just have your husband bring his bathrobe. 
And <laughs> okay. so, <laughs> all right. so, interesting. So the dads would all have bathrobes, and we would act out the Christmas story, and they were the wise men, and so they had to wear their bathrobes, and we yeah. had gifts, and we had you know angels, and we had kids that were animals, and we videotaped it one year, and wow. anyway, it was really funny. Um, but <laughs> we acted. Send me the, what, a copy of that. I was going to say we can play that. Yeah, what did giant we do? VHS. Yeah. Why didn't we do this somewhere. when I was little? <laughs> <laughs> and then we would. Um, Anyway, we would, but on St. Nicholas Day, we had stockings out because in the traditional story of St. Nicholas, it's probably a legend, but um, he's not a legend, but yes. the things that went right. associated yeah, yeah. with them. But he, um, there were poor women and they were hanging up their stockings to dry yeah. and he threw gold coins into the window and they landed in the stockings. Yeah. So we would do stockings on December 6th and we would put in usually some socks, mm -hmm. gold coins, an orange and some little toy. Yeah. And then I think, I can't remember if we left the stockings up or we took them down. I can't remember. I think at first we started taking them down, then we started leaving them up. Yeah. And then eventually we we don't do that tradition anymore. Oh, we would have a fancy dinner fit for a king and we would... Um, I'd make a pound cake and cut off the top of it and hollow it out and fill it with frosting oh, and wow. put all kinds of, Whoa. you know, candies inside. That was the, the like, I don't the, remember any of this. I know, I'm sorry. <laughs> it was for the older kids. Sorry. <laughs> they remember it. That's funny. Um, what was the question again? <laughs> yeah, what, where, um, you know, where have you experienced peace or where okay. haven't you experienced anyway, peace? Anyway, that was just part of the... I just remember growing up that even stockings were such a big hubbub. Yeah. And it, it takes so and, much time and yeah. mental energy. And, and so that was our way of doing stockings, but actually having some meaning to it. Yeah. yeah. And, um, and getting the, taking care of the Santa Claus part too. And like I said, we didn't, you know, I told my kids, you don't, don't tell other kids. You don't don't go around yeah. saying Santa's not for real because you're yeah. going to get blackballed. But <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Anyway, but <laughs> but they knew who the real St. Nicholas was. Yeah. So, so anyway, we, that was one way we strove well, to have I, peace I in our house. I like that because it does, it keeps Christ in Christmas. Mm -hmm. It's something that, you know, mm -hmm. that's kind of the phrase that everybody uses. Uh, but I, I love that because it allows you to kind of still participate in some of, you know, the holiday aspect of it, but you're also keeping Christmas holy and you're, mm -hmm, you're yeah. keeping it focused on him and so growing up for you you know was are the holidays a peaceful time for you depends on the year um okay yeah yeah i mean there's definitely so the way i guess the world would look at it is you know we have this awesome holiday where santa claus if he's real, you know, um, <laughs> <laughs> gives everyone presents and it's just a great time with family, but can also be an incredibly stressful time of yeah. year. Mm -hmm. Um, but focusing on this aspect of peace and as believers, we have good reason to celebrate this time of year because mm -hmm. that's the time that our savior came to the earth. And so keeping that in mind that there is a genuine reason and a good reason other than presence yeah. that we are celebrating yeah. this time of year. Um, that can just bring a lot of peace because mm -hmm. totally. it's the busiest time of year. And, yeah. um, I know I am generally a pretty busy person, especially during Christmas. Yes. Yeah. And, um, yeah. So just maintaining the focus on why we're celebrating rather than the celebration itself. Mm -hmm. For me, it's been harder in the last few years because my children are all adults mm -hmm. and I have some of them that still live at home and some that come for Christmas and they all have their own income. Yeah. So presents are a way bigger deal than they were. I mean, yeah. obviously we did presents when they were little, but we tried not to do a ton of presents yeah. because, yeah. and we don't put the the presents under the tree until mm -hmm. Christmas Eve. Yeah. I mean, they're in my bedroom. They're not like they're hidden or anything <laughs> yeah. like that. They're still at the but store, you mean. It's not, it's not <laughs> yeah. like, they're still at the store till Christmas Eve. Yeah, so anyway, um, but we just didn't put them under the Christmas tree because I didn't want the kids to be just that be their focus and yeah. the focus of the yeah. living room. Yeah. And um, that wasn't your focus, right? No, no. of mm. course not. Yeah. <laughs> but I have, you know, cause I have adult children, they do their own shopping now and I uh -huh. have a couple of them that their gift is gift giving Yes, and their spiritual gift. And that's, yeah. it's not my gift. Yeah. And, um, and they go over the top and I'm not, I'm not belittling that. I'm, I'm thankful. That's what they like to do. And I yeah. feel very blessed by that. But, um, so anyway, it, but it has been harder for me. It's been a little more, yeah. Frustrating might be a little too strong of a word for yeah. it. Just but it forces you to adapt. 
It yes. forces you, the, the way you had it has to change. And so you want to make sure you change it in a way that's still valuable mm-hmm. and yes. good and intentional, not just, well, it's different and whatever happens, happens. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That's hard. Because the reality is, is that like um, every stage of life brings changes. You know, when, um, when we were first married, um, it was just like, well, we just go to each family's house and then um, <laughs> doesn't the, happen with children. <laughs> it doesn't easily. happen with children. And, well, then we moved cross country and we still didn't have kids, but we weren't coming back for Christmas. Yeah. And so, um, you know, we, we developed traditions that were very uh, loosely held, partially because both of us were adults and we're like, we're fine. Mm. Um, and so it revolved around a lot more like hosting and serving those who didn't have family and stuff mm-hmm. like that. And then we had kids and we still wanted to host serve those who didn't have family. But now we have this added stress of how do we make sure we do right by our kids in the in all the senses that you're talking about like how do we make sure that they get gifts but it's not their focus how do we make sure that they understand the reason of the reason for the season how do we make sure that you know all these things you know to the best of our ability are done um but that as that takes away a lot of peace because now you're you're adding so much stress and structure um that one of the ways we we purposely found um peace in the in the midst of this is um is by tr- not trying to add too many structures. Um, you Keeping know, it simple. Yeah. At one point we had um, the giving manger was a thing that we did for a couple of years. I don't know if you guys are familiar with that. Um, it's where you have this like empty manger and it has a book that goes along with it um, that uh, that kind of describes it and tells a uh, fictional story of a family and how the giving manger played out in their mm-hmm. life. But essentially there's a manger and there's a little cup of straws. And every time you do something for someone else, you put a straw in the manger and on Christmas Eve you put yeah. Jesus in the manger. <clears throat> and um, Man, you guys do a lot of cool <clears throat> traditions. I, yeah. I don't remember. That is really yeah. cool. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and then more recently, so last year and this upcoming year, we uh, were introduced to um, Jotham's Journey and the other ones that were like mm-hmm. that, like Amon's Adventure, mm-hmm. Tabitha's yeah. Travels. Um, there's a couple others like that. Um, there's actually some for Lent, but there's also like three or four for Christmas. And we mm-hmm. read one for Christmas last year, and we're probably going to do that again this year. And um, where it's just, it's a very simple thing that doesn't require a ton of time or a ton of structure. Um, it's just like, hey, during around the breakfast table, we're just going to read one of these each day, or around yeah. the dinner table, we're going to read one of these each day instead of this takes up a really big thing. And especially with our lives, I mean, we have a lot of busyness already with the church that we're, we're doing. And so, um, we don't want to try to add too many layers to that. I'm going to read that to my class this year too. I teach mm -hmm. fifth grade. Oh really? Yeah, Yeah. I'm going to, and I'm really excited about it. They're such well done stories. Like honestly, even adults, I think would appreciate them. Yeah. Yeah. They're really well done. I have no idea what they are, but you can borrow the one we read last year. (laughs) Honestly, they're honestly good for adults. Yeah. Like dead serious. They're really well written. Okay. Like I'll, I'll check them out. Yeah. Um, I, I, I'm really happy that we're, we're talking about peace. Obviously it's part of Advent, but I think for me, um, it, the holidays in general, especially Christmas time, because, uh, I know I talked about it in a previous episode, but you know, my wife and I, you know, we don't, we're, we don't have kids yet, you know, we're, and her parents live in Colorado. My parents live here. And so we, mm-hmm. we actually go back and forth every other mm-hmm. year. And so we kind of do Thanksgiving and Christmas are kind of opposites. Mm -hmm. Um, And it adds a lot of, it's stressful for me, especially my wife takes it in stride just Mm -hmm. because, you know, for her, it's, she's getting to go see her parents and, and then when she comes back, it's, it's home here. So yeah. It, but for me, it's it's very. I, I'm You're not a huge from me. Traveler. You're just... Yeah, exactly. I miss <laughs> Travis. And, but but no, I'm I'm not a huge traveler. I don't I don't really love leaving home. To be mm, honest, yeah. like if I'm wherever my home is, I like to be there. And so the holidays have always been sh- very stressful for me. And, and there's not there wasn't ever really a lot of peace. Mm. I haven't really experienced a ton of peace in the holidays. Let me introduce you to Jesus. No, I'm sorry. Yeah, I, no, that's good. And so even when you know, even when I was a kid having all my family all together it it's kind of stressful we're very yeah. i was telling anson earlier we're very passionate family <laughs> argumentative maybe not Dennis the best words. <laughs> yeah. and uh so, so we're very passionate and it, it just it's not the most peaceful but i'm happy that we're going through advent because you know as we read through what advent means mm-hmm. and we think about and actually focus and be intentional about focusing on jesus he brings peace and there's peace in not only in, in 
you know, his coming and, and what you, you know, had explained in the very beginning, but as we wait for his second coming, yeah. there's peace in having the hope because we have that hope. There's peace there because of, because Jesus is alive and he's mm-hmm. coming back. And so I just think for me, my, you know, this year, especially I'm really trying to focus and in, in on him and on these things, but peace is especially one of those things that I really am, am focused on. Yeah. 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 So, well, and I think that's a, a good reminder that you say, you know, you haven't had it, you want it, you're focusing in on it. Um, just bring up that word intentionality that we always talk about, yeah. you know, the, the way Christmas is set up. And I don't just mean like uh, from a religious standpoint, but more from a societal one, like it's right after Thanksgiving, it's right after Black Friday. There's all these assumptions of um, all these things you're going to do, whether it be baking cookies for neighbors or being a part of like, yeah, seeing, hanging all the Christmas lights and trying to outdo, you know, what you did last year as far as decorations (laughs) and attending 15 Christmas parties and doing all these different things. It's fun, but it's certainly not peaceful. <laughs> if you like that kind of thing. <laughs> if you like that kind of thing. Well, if but, you know my mom, she likes yeah. that kind of thing. <laughs> yeah. But like, um, there's just so many layers. And even the things that we enjoy the most oftentimes still remove peace from our lives. Oh, just yeah. because it's, we're limited. We're finite. We can only do so many things, attend so many things, and be a part of so many every year. Things. Are you ready for Christmas yet? Uh-huh. I hear that multiple times mm. every year. Yeah. And it's, it's hit me the last couple of years because I thought, am I ready for Christmas? Yeah. You mean, do I have the 10,000 things done that are required by society? Yeah. You know, like, do I have all my presents wrapped? Do I have all of them bought? Do I have all my cookies baked? And the amount of, the amount of guilt, like people who, um, I know many people who like will, you know, Christmas morning comes and they're like, yep, didn't wrap anything. And they have just all this guilt about it. (laughs) And it's like, that's what we've created. You know, yeah. and just yeah. like well, this, this restlessness, this lack of peace. Yeah. And you have to be intentional to, to receive the peace of Jesus during this time. Yeah. And there is like, I'm not sorry about saying this, but there is no peace outside of, of Jesus. I mean, he, he has that eternal peace. And mm-hmm. I think a lot of people, even coming into the holidays, maybe you're somebody who's like, no, I, I'm, I find peace in, in doing all these different things. And that's fair, but it's not. It's not going to stay. It's not everlasting peace. Yeah, yeah it's, not, it's not everlasting. Yeah. And so when the holidays are over, it's like, well, where did your peace go? And and it's mm-hmm. like, that's why if we can focus on on Jesus, you know, the Prince of Peace, yeah. that can stay with us. And yeah. and that's, I, I don't know, I just think about that aspect too. It's it's not about searching for peace. Like, I, I want peace, but I don't want it in in these different things. No. Yeah. You don't want the, the fake manufactured piece yeah. that we can I do remember up. one Christmas when my children were little and I don't remember what exactly the difference was, but I was incredibly intentional that year that we were going to good stay. Year. You weren't there yet. <laughs> yeah, no, you weren't. Sorry. <laughs> um, I was just incredible. I was just intentional that we were not going to get caught up in the world and yeah. caught up in the hubbub. Yeah. And it was incredible. Yeah. <laughs> it really was. Yeah. And I've thought about that many times. We've never had that same kind of a year again, you know? Mm-hmm. And I mean, I try, I do try and I, and there are things that we don't do because they're, yeah. they, we just don't need to add that. Yeah. Well, um, but one thing that could be said, so you're talking about like, people are asking, are you ready for Christmas? Mm-hmm. Question we could ask ourselves is, is your, is your heart ready for Christmas? Mm, is your like, heart ready for Christ? Yeah. That, is your heart ready for Christ? That's good. Is there room in the that's inn? That's really good. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, it's true. And I mean, it does, um, to a certain extent, I think it, we're talking about removing some things or at least removing some pressures and expectations, but we're not necessarily saying you have to um, create this perfectly uh, serene picture of life in order to enjoy peace. Cause yeah. you know, that's just fake peace. Yeah. You know, I'll never forget. There was this really awesome story. I don't know if it's true or not, but of this painting competition where, um, they were, um, all told, okay, paint a, uh, paint piece and a lot of them it was the classic you know thomas kincaid you know uh stream and sheep and like yep. you know all that kind of stuff but there was one person who drew um this lighthouse and there was this massive storm and all these waves crashing but at the very top you could see this person just kind of sitting in a chair next to the light <laughs> of the lighthouse just at peace and i think that's kind of the piece that we as christians um get to enjoy like there's nothing wrong yeah. with calming things down and with um with removing things and enjoying that but the actual peace that we yeah. feel is not reliant on that yep you know it can be it's in, peace in the storm 
It's peace in the yeah. storm. And sometimes that storm might be cultural expectations and all these mm-hmm. things that we're expected to do or whatever that we may or may not um, do. But in, it doesn't mean necessarily trying to strip everything out and being like, okay, we have nothing going on. Now I'm at peace. Because even then, you still have your own heart and mind. You can yeah. still be not at peace with yeah. nothing yeah. around you. Yep. Yep. Um, we're finding peace in Christ. And it's different. I Yeah, it makes me think this this is going totally a different direction, but it makes me think about, you know, last month when we talked about community mm-hmm. and inviting people in and mm-hmm. stuff. What an incredible witness it, it is to, you know, be, you know, have maybe inviting somebody in or you have friends or, or different family who don't know Jesus and it's totally chaotic. It's a storm, you know, mm-hmm. Christmas morning's coming, thing, you know, things are, are cooking and everybody's running. But but there's you have peace and you're able to talk with them and what an incredible witness it is for them to see where does this peace come from because certainly <laughs> it's not because this is peaceful here and I just think man like that's a really cool like even just having that peace in this season could be a, a witness I don't know yeah oh totally when people see the peace of Christ that you have that they don't have mm-hmm. they're like what's the different about your holiday yeah. experience mm-hmm. that is I leaving do want to come up out. with an answer to that like. Are you ready for Christmas? Mm-hmm. I do want to come up, hmm. not a snarky answer, you know. But I want to come up with an answer. You don't want to say I'm ready for Christ. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you don't I want to say wanna, that. I, no, I've been thinking about it. Like, what would my? Because that's just such a. What's the word I want? It's not a good question. I mean, it, it's just a worldly question. Yeah. I guess that's what it is. Yeah. It's just like, have you done everything that it, you need to do to get yeah. ready? You know. Well, and every yeah. when they say everything, they're not thinking, preparing your heart to receive. Right. Jesus, they're thinking, wrapping presents. Right, exactly. Going it's almost shopping. like a negative. Yeah. Like, are you ready for Christmas? Like, it's, it's yeah. coming. It's yeah. another yeah. thing that's happening. Yeah. yeah. yeah it's yeah. happening yeah. again. You ready for the big yeah. board meeting, you know, Christmas? Yeah. Yeah. What, well, what, I mean, what would you say your answer would be to that question? Well, since you said you're, you don't want to say a snarky answer, I'm like, <laughs> I, don't know if, I, I don't know if all my answers are snarky. Like, I don't know if it's snarky to say, like, well, I'm preparing my heart for Christ or I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm ready for Christ or I don't know if that's snarky or not. Or well, like, I think it's how you I am, say or it. like, I'm so emotionally ready to celebrate that day with my kids, like, or w- with family celebrate or with whatever. Celebrate Jesus' birthday. Yeah. Like, kids. I don't know if that comes across as snarky or not. I don't know. Maybe. What about Olivia you? <laughs> I don't know. If someone were to ask me that, I would probably just ask, what do you mean? <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I mean, that's well, that, fair. Hey, that's a fair question. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think, I think Clarify. for me, it's like taking kind of both, like. I would, I think I'd probably answer with, I, w- I would probably say, you know, and in, in, I would probably address the kind of that worldly mm-hmm. aspect of it and be like, you know, it is it's a crazy season and, you know, yeah, I, I got to, I got to prepare for it, but I'm so happy that, you know, Christ was born and that's yeah. where I keep my focus. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Something like that would probably be my, that's why it's yeah. the most I, wonderful time of the year, you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I like that art. I might use that. Okay. Yeah. All right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, so then, you know, if, if people are asking you, you know, are you ready for Christmas? Um, outside of just giving them an answer, how do you prepare yourself for, for Christmas? Yeah, that's a good so one. like in the, in light of this idea of we're preparing our hearts, um, for Christ, we're, we're not just preparing our hearts for Christ in the sense of celebrating Christmas, but also mm-hmm. reminding ourselves of a second coming. We are specifically, uh, pursuing the peace that he gives us, um, not if it's something we need to earn, but it's something that um, we need to prepare our hearts to receive and yeah. to recognize that he desires to give that to us. Mm-hmm. What does that look like yeah. to to receive his peace during the season, to prepare our hearts for, um, to celebrate his first coming, to anticipate his second coming, um, just as you have a to-do list of, you know, wrap the gifts, go do the grocery shopping, bake the stuff. What is your list of like, yeah, here's here's how I can be preparing my heart. That's a good question. That is a good question. <laughs> we have simplified a bit on giving gifts. I love mm-hmm. making things for people. Mm-hmm. And, um, and you know, I was making them for 30 and 40 people sometimes. And that's not, and that's, that's a lot. lot of people. That's a it lot. is. <laughs> Starting that's, in January. Yeah. And, and that's just our family. Now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, um, and that's not including our family, yeah. actually. <laughs> that was just kind of like, anyway. And I thought, I can't do that. Yeah. I've been working full time the last two Christmases or the last last Christmas I was working full time, I'm working full time this Christmas and I can't do that. But I yeah. thought I don't need to do that either. It's it doesn't mm-hmm. matter. You know, yeah. if I give them a soup mix or a cookie mix, mm-hmm. it's fun, but it's not necessary and I hope that those people know that 
they're just as special to me if I don't give them, you know, yeah. if I don't make a homemade gift. And um, it's just gotten harder to do as I've gotten older and especially working full time. That's really hard. Yeah. Um, and I had another one too, but I can't think what it is. So I keep talking. And yeah, all I think there's certainly a, an aspect of um, there's seasons where maybe we do more than other things. Mm-hmm. But there's also the reality of like, what is like most valuable? Mm-hmm. You know, I went through a season for a couple of years where um, I was writing everyone I knew basically a birthday card. Um, and it was oh like, I was literally goodness. writing like two or three a week. Like it was, Dude, it was for insane. like a couple of years <clears throat> and that's crazy. And I was just, it, the mentality was I want to make people feel special and seen yeah. and appreciated. And, um, you don't just like their posts on Facebook about their birthday. <laughs> no, it was, it was <laughs> a thing. Send them the text. And, Happy um, <laughs> and then I stopped and I was like, you know, it was too much. And like you're saying, it was just too much. But then I also started thinking, I was like, you know what? Like these same people would probably appreciate a text. And if I texted them and just prayed for them really short on their birthday, like that's probably honestly more valuable than writing a card and less stressful. And it's like, you know, there's always this balance of, you know, what, what is most valuable, what is, uh, most able, but also recognizing that we're not called to do everything. Like there's well, other people in their, yeah. their lives who are also giving them gifts. Like we're not called to be everything for everyone. And that's part of sometimes what robs us of our peace is trying to be, you know, essentially the savior to everyone and trying to yeah. be the, the, you know, the person who does everything for everyone else. And we're not called to that. Well, I'm curious even to like when you were doing that, like, did it, were you able to actually give, you know, all of that, what you know your intent behind writing everybody a card were you able to actually put all of that you know attention to each individual card or by the time you're at like 30 was it kind of just the same thing to the Cut, copy paste yeah it, yeah. It, yeah how would no how would that i felt work? i felt like it was genuine but it took more time than i think i'm able to give yeah you know i'll never forget the very beginning of jesus ministry i want to say it's mark three he um he says that in the the days of Elijah, there were many widows, but he only went and served one. Mm-hmm. And there was many lepers in the days of Elijah, uh, Elisha, but only Naaman the, um, was healed. And he's basically saying and warning them, like, I'm not here, like, I'm not here to do every single thing that you ever want. I'm called to accomplish a specific ministry, minis- mission here on earth. And I think the same thing is said for us. Yeah. Like we're not called to serve and be everything for everyone. We're called to do the thing God's called us to. And that might be a season of doing that yeah. and a season of not. So but we shouldn't have guilt the whole body of that. Of Christ. Yeah. We all have our separate roles. Absolutely. But they're all for one uh, big purpose. Yeah. yeah. So that's a good, that's a great one. You know, to, you know, how do we prepare our hearts for peace? It's also, you know, saying, I can't do everything. Yeah. So it's kind of setting it up. Yeah. Simplifying, simplifying mm-hmm. and yeah. allowing. And not feeling guilty about it. Yeah. 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 What about for you, Anson? <sighs> to be honest, nothing is in my brain right now about that. Um, well, I'll, I'll just kind of go, maybe that you, this will jog okay. something for you, but you know, I haven't really experienced a ton of peace in my previous holidays, but this season I am uh, definitely much more intentionally as I'm trying to prepare my heart, what that looks like is I'm intentionally being, uh, you know, looking through Advent and following through it, but, but giving the time that it really, uh, requires to think about Jesus coming and him coming back and really focusing on that. Whereas, you know, obviously every Christmas season, I try to keep Christ in Christmas, but Mm -hmm. this time I'm, I'm really like intentional about it. Like we use that word, uh, I think being intentional about doing mm-hmm. that is helping to prepare my heart for. So, like, in what way are you ten- intentional? I mean, I think it's really easy. It's easier now because, hey, look, we're on a podcast, and I have to kind of yeah. think about this and focus on this. But, um, <laughs> but yeah, it's it's reading through, you know, some of the things that you sent me. It's reading through that and saying, you know, I'm actually going to look at this and I'm going to think about this in a different way and. So it's so like meditation. Yeah, that exactly. Like yeah. taking God's Prayer, word and, and truth word. and, and yeah, yeah. through it. Yeah. That's kind of where I'm at. Yeah. Um, I think you talk about just like finding peace, like in the holiday. Is that okay? So, um, myself and the other interns, we recently finished a book and one of, I think it was in the last chapter, there was this really cool story and it was just, it was just, <laughs> it was a fictional story, but it, just the message behind it is is really cool. Just um, basically saying that you do have time in your life to focus on 
these things that are important, mm-hmm. um, but you've got to remove clutter first. So the story is basically there's this um, this lady who lives in this little cottage, and she's like she's talking to her neighbor who's not a believer, and she says, "Hey, we're having this Bible study um, this Friday night or whenever it is. Um, you should come." And um, and her neighbor's like, "Oh no, I I don't really do that." But then her neighbor is curious, curious enough the next day is like, "Hey, how did that go?" She's like, "It was great." There were 35 people and that house was packed. And then mm. it's like the next week, um, it's the same thing is happening. And her neighbor asked her again afterwards, hey, how did it go? There were 65 people. It was packed. Whoa. And then and then it happened one more time. And the same thing happened. It's like, there were 80 people in my house. It was packed. It's like, you said, you know, you said your house was full with 35. It's like, well, it was full with 35 and it was full with 65. But we, what we ended up doing is we moved all the furniture out onto the lawn. Oh. So it's really, yeah, making that room because yeah. this season is you have crazy time, busy. You have time to do whatever you want to do. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah you, just have to have rem- the same. you just have to remove something else. Yes. Yeah. We always try to do it by addition, but you have to do it by subtraction eventually. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. That's, There's that's only good. so much time, but how you use that time is, is up to you and how mm-hmm. God uses you in that time. Yeah. Is, yeah. yeah. This is the season of less Marvel and, uh, <laughs> you know, less YouTube yeah. and more Jesus. And, yeah. uh, yeah. should be a, a 12 month season, you know? Yeah. Uh, yeah. More <laughs> yeah. Jesus, you know, less Marvel. <laughs> I, uh, I actually, now that you brought that up, that reminds me, cause I remember being, I must've been like 12 or 13. And I remember thinking like, how can I, because even at that age, it was stressful for me. Uh, I was just a stressful kid. But I remember thinking, like, I, how can I be excited about Jesus coming, you know, this year? Mm-hmm. And I thought, I'm going to listen to Christmas music all year round. <laughs> <laughs> That's you get excited, not sick of it. <laughs> I, I got maybe oh, to... Oh, little Arthur's thoughts. Mid-February. <laughs> And I, and the next, I was so sick of it. I literally couldn't listen to it until like a week before Christmas that following year. That's so how did, you don't do work. Advent. So, so it's, I'm thinking it's like, don't add things. <laughs> Definitely don't add things. Cause, yeah. cause our, our, we can't fill everything. We have to really choose and decide. In that same vein of like not adding things, um, it, you know, we all, not we all, but I think most of us have the, the guilty feeling of like, I should wake up earlier. And that's how you actually I don't like, have, I don't have that. I've thing. always had that. I had it, but I, 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 I it's, I've worked through it. Yeah. No, my, my sleeping <laughs> through it. I'm still, I'm still it's come a long way, Arthur. <laughs> but there was definitely a season in my life where I just, I wanted to keep waking up earlier and I was having such a hard time and just like, I need a discipline of waking up earlier, discipline of waking up earlier. And then it occurred to me one, uh, I don't, one day that the discipline is not in waking up earlier. It's going, going to bed, bed earlier. earlier. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it's, you got to give and take. You yeah. Have to. <laughs> you have to subtract before you can add yeah, you know, two hours and of sleep's not good enough. Travis. Yeah. Like you can discipline yourself to, you know, wake up earlier for a certain amount of time without going to bed later but not forever. It's not sustainable. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, the same thing, whether it be traditions, whether it be, you know, the whole long stretch leading up to Christmas, you're simply not going to be able to just add more and more things. You have to first take away. Yeah. Yeah. Really good. So, um, I, I love that we're, we're talking about this. It's definitely seems like I didn't think that I I wasn't even thinking what we're talking about of subtracting, but it's making so much more sense (laughs) to me now. Um, before we kind of close out, what we've been doing is we've been reading a uh, passage of scripture. And so, Travis, what, uh, where are we reading? And you kind of brought it up in the mm-hmm. very beginning. Mm-hmm. Um, where's that piece of scripture? And would you like to read it? Yeah. So, um, like Arthur was saying, you know, we're, we're closing these with verses, uh, just reading some scripture that reflects on this week's topic. Um, if you search... Uh, Advent themes, you'll find a lot of verses for each of these different weeks. So if you're interested in following more of a traditional Advent style, um, you can for each week just Google and find like, oh, here's a bunch of verses. I could separate these and read these throughout the week. Mm -hmm. Uh, But this is actually the the primary verse regarding peace since it does point towards the the angels and stuff. It was the section you referenced. It's in Luke 2 uh, verses 10 through 14. And it says, and the angel said to them, fear not for behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. 
And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among those with whom he is pleased. That's great. That's what Christmas is all about, Charlie Brown. <laughs> it is. It is. <laughs> um, so thank you guys for coming on. It was really nice to have, you know, some family together here. Mm-hmm. Um, can I add one thing to yeah, that? Yeah, absolutely. It just, you know, we hear that scripture. I, you can say it verbatim, you know. Yeah. Most people can't even without having sat down and intentionally memorizing it. But we've heard it so many times. Yeah. And I just try to make it a point to really listen to that. And then there's some Christmas carols. Um, Tad is good at this. He loves to sing every single verse of the ones that have that tell a story, mm-hmm. even if it's 13 verses long. Yeah. But there are some that are just rich in mm-hmm. their theology. And so it's, again, we hear Christmas carols, blah, 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 blah. You know, it's easy to do that yeah. instead mm-hmm. of um, just really listening to it. And there's some that are incredibly mm-hmm. worshipful. Yeah. yeah. And that has been a blessing to me the last few years. So Yeah. Well, dang. Now, talking about worship, we could have gone another hour of this. <laughs> um, but yeah, thank you for coming on, you guys. Uh, thank you for watching and listening and just joining with us as we walk through Advent together. Next week is is will be the last week getting ready before Christmas. Mm-hmm. And so that's really exciting. Um, thanks again. And uh, as always, God bless. <laughs>